Welcome to the Post Project Product Showcase. I hope you enjoyed the Sunshine Acres episode. I'm going to go into a little bit of detail here on some of the products that were actually used in the, in the installation of this particular project. So what we have is we have our Signature Series skimmer. This is going to house our submersible pump. This is a pre-filter. This is basically a mechanical filter. It's going to capture debris. So leaf debris, duck feathers, organic material that falls inside of the pond. It's going to get sucked into this opening. It's going to get caught into a, a little removable basket so you can remove that on a regular basis. Down underneath that is going to be a filter pad. That's going to pick up the finer debris and it's going to create an uh, actual barrier between our pumps. So the submersible pump sits down on the bottom. Over on this other side here, we have our poundless vault. This is going to house two pumps inside of it. We also have a few of these aqua blocks in front. This is a little bit different type of filtration. This is drawing the water down through the layer of gravel, down into the pumps that are down below that. As that water gets drawn down through the gravel bed, get a little bit of biological filtration that actually happens inside of that. The two pumps that are gonna be sitting inside of this unit are gonna discharge water into key strategic locations around the perimeter of the pond. We actually have some jets and things like that to increase the overall circulation. And then one of the pumps, the biggest pump actually in this project, is gonna send all that water over to our main waterfall so we could have all that dissolved oxygen coming in, creating the sights and the sounds and everything that they're looking for on this project. Whenever doing a large project like this, we try to mix up some of the design elements. What we've done on this project is we came across this deadfall from out in the desert. This is a mesquite wood, rock hard stuff. It's gonna hold up really, really well in the water for us. So what we were doing is we were trying to incorporate this wood in just to break up the edges and add that little bit of extra something and push this project over the top. So we're thinking just like we do with any type of waterfall construction. We have to think of frame rocks or we have to think of framing areas for the waterfall. So because of the natural shape of this, we have a high spot over here we have this beautiful uh, this gnarly piece on the other side we're going to try to force all that water right in between those two spots so these are creating that framing of the waterfall we have this area underneath that's an awesome little cave type area just like you would find out in nature so as that water comes down here kind of creates all that turbulence and everything which scours out the earth underneath but back behind here we still need to stabilize that slope so we're going to drop in a big rock so what we did was we pulled our, down our rubber liner. This allows us basically to come in here and we could excavate back the soil. This is the nice thing about working with a flexible rubber membrane. It gives us tons of flexibility. If we want to make a change, we can make a change instantly. We could add onto the liner, we could move things around. That's what makes this type of construction really organic, which is a lot of fun. So what we did, we laid this in place. We had to manipulate the excavation a little bit. We still have to carve out a little soil to lock this big log in place. We want to make sure it's structurally sound and then everything's going to kind of flow around it. So we want this thing to look like this big log has fallen down across an old stream bed and now the water is basically rerouting around the actual log. All right, so what we're doing, we're in the process of setting all of our big boulders. Um, our goal is to stay in front of the rest of the guys with the smaller stuff. So we're coming in, setting the framework for the waterfalls, for these big peninsulas, creating this big rocky outcropping. The key to this whole thing is trying to make it look natural. What we're doing is we're trying to mimic the natural mountains and the things in the surrounding area. So by looking at some of those features, we're just trying to replicate them. What we have around here locally is we have all these erratic big boulders and uh, all types of unique structures that are popping out of the lower desert areas. So that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to create these riparian corridors that are normally found in these washes and arroyos throughout the area. So what we've done, erratic placement of boulders coming around. We're trying to strategically drop in big, large, flat rocks. Those are some standing areas where we're inviting people right up to the perimeter. Over in here, uh, this type of an area we're coming in, big boulders, and then we transition down into some smaller granite cobblestones and smaller gravel. This is replicating actually what's called an alluvial fan. This is what happens when you get this fast moving water coming out of the mountains and it takes all these smaller rocks and it tumbles them and it washes them down these little canyons and corridors. And then what it does is when it hits the valley floor, it just kind of spreads out almost like a fan. We have certain key areas where we have those big washes coming in, big rugged outcroppings of granite stone, and then over in this section we're coming in like with a little beach entry so this is where the kids are going to actually come in access the water and the whole goal with all of this stuff is to intertwine all of these pieces so we got the logs we got the beautiful granite rocks we have the smooth river stone all that stuff is going to work together to create this beautiful aquatic habitat 
constructed wetland filters are critical on larger projects. What we have here is we have this large pond, it's going to be loaded with ducks and fish. So both of those are going to create a lot of different wastes that are going to come into the pond. So what we want to do is create this constructed wetland filter and it's going to detoxify all the nutrients that are coming in from the fish waste and also from the duck waste. We just started the construction on our wetland filter at the far other end of this feature. So what we're doing is we're digging down a large pit approximately three feet deep and then what we did is we came in and we cut this deep trench. Uh, it's basically like a trough that goes all the way along the bottom and it houses our centipede module. At the far end we have our snorkel. Those are joined together. We have fast moving water that comes into the uh, centipede module. The water then is going to slow down. We have a 93 percent reduction in water velocity which is going to allow the sedimentation process to occur. Then the water is going to continue to flow up at a very very gentle rate. When that occurs on top of these blocks, these are going to become a home for beneficial microbes and bacteria, and those bacteria and microbes are going to break down the nitrogenous waste that's generated by the ducks, by fish, by decaying organic matter. So this is what's going to keep that entire body of water clean, and the nice thing about this is it's modular. So we could add or subtract more of these centipede modules on depending upon the size of the project or the desired water quality. This gives us tons of flexibility and tons of control. We can handle any water quality issues. Our next step is to continue our layer of aqua blocks along the bottom. Then I'm going to take that large river rock and I'm going to cover up everything. I like using the large river rock first because again it continues to spread that water out. We're going to do approximately eight inches. Then we're going to come in with the smaller gravel inch and a half to two inch gravel and then finish it off with a three quarter inch. So I'm going to have multiple level, levels of the different gravels Then on top of that we're going to finish off the outside perimeter with our decorative stonework. The final piece cut a waterfall right out of here. This is going to help connect the water back into our pond and the waterfall is critical because as that water comes out of here it increases the dissolved oxygen. The biological activity that's happening in our wetland filter consumes lots of oxygen in the water. So we want to re-add that oxygen through the process of a waterfall and enter it back into our system. We just finished excavating the area for our waterfall. Some design tips that you want to think about whenever you're doing a waterfall is you want to try to think about the water course itself. You also want to think about the different viewing areas that you're trying to take into consideration. So what we have here, starting down in the bottom, we have this narrow joint where these big boulders are coming together. The reason we did that was this is a big long pond. We're trying to get a push of water over here. So it's a very short waterfall, thick water coming in. It's going to try to create this big push of water going towards our skimmer area. It's also going to help keep the area right in front of our beach clean. The next thing that we're doing right behind those big boulders, we're digging out kind of a pocket or a pool. It's like a plunge pool. We're going to have a big wide waterfall coming here. It's going to fall into this pool, lots of turbulence facing right towards our patio area. The top waterfall is going to be facing people as they come walking in. So twists and turns, try to think of a water course. Water is very, very simple. It wants to take the straightest path possible going down a hillside. But what happens is it hits an immovable object like a big giant boulder and it moves the water around the boulder and then it carves its way through the weaker area. So what we're going to do, we're going to come in here with a big giant boulder on this side and a big giant boulder on that side. Those are called our framing rocks. That means the water gets forced in between them just as you would see in nature. So it's very, very simple. We are working with natural stone. So we have ideas, we have thoughts and everything on how it's going to look, but it's an organic process. We want to set one rock and what that one rock does, it tells us what the rock next to it is going to look like. So we're always trying to manipulate and change around, but we try to keep those basic design philosophies in mind all the time. This area here may look huge for the waterfall, but in reality it's going to look completely different when we're done. What we're always trying to do is we over excavate the area. The reason we do that is we're going to place big giant boulders in here and we want to make the rocks fit right. We don't dig the excavation and fit the rocks to the excavation. We over dig everything, place the rocks so they look right, and then we backfill behind those rocks with our soil. So this is a very organic process. This gives us lots of flexibility. So when we're done with this, completely transformed, it's all going to get choked down. This is going to be an interactive stream. We want to have big giant boulders. Kids could hop in and out of here and really have a good time with the water. Click here to see the entire project built at Sunshine Acres Children's Home.
And don't forget to subscribe to our Pond Squad YouTube channel or visit our website for more information.